there is this night that I realized a commotion. There was a noise and I wake up and I see my mother sitting on a bed and she's bleeding from the nose, from the ears, from the mouth. And my dad was standing in, in the middle of that room and he was holding some, some torch. There are those flashlights that used to have to use cells. She, he was holding that and he was hitting my mom with that on the head. As a little girl, that is when I, I realized that kind of violence, but I did not get to understand it immediately, but I saw that picture. My name is Elizabeth Wamboi Kiari. I am a mother of two little boys. I, I am a teacher. And the reason why I am seated on this seat today is because I am in a very big mix up right now, uh, a pool of confusion. I am wallowing in difficulty, uncertainty, because of a bad marriage with a narcissistic husband that I met 11 years ago. Um, so many evil things have been done to me during this stay in this marriage. Um, abuse, I have been abused and I did not realize that I was being abused. I thought I, w I wanted a family, I thought I wanted a husband, I thought I wanted a marriage, but it turned out to be a, a torture chamber for me and my children. So I am in a lot of pain right now. I am broken, I am torn, I am confused. I am not able to come to terms with what has happened to me in the past four months. I have separated from my narcissistic husband because of violence and domestic abuse, which has been so extreme and in disguise, bringing a lot of confusion and uncertainty for me and my kids right now. I was born somewhere in Kiambu, Kiambu Dumberi, in a village called Tinganga. That is where my mom was married. Uh, my mom was married to my dad in a church wedding and you know, especially those days for women when you get married in a in a in a white wedding in a gown you know it was a big thing and my mom was very happy she loved um family life and she put in all her energy in in that family because when i came to realize it i used to see her and i admired her a lot i really really loved how she was handling us because she used to take me to church a lot and um, she was even holding positions like she was a catechist. I got to realize that she was going through a lot of difficulties because my dad was a drunkard. He used to drink a lot and he was violent. There are these times when I was a little girl that I would see my father come home at night uh, this age whereby our parents used to keep us in their bed before they, they get rid of you at around two years, you are still sharing a bed with your parents. And there is this night that I realized a commotion. There was a noise and I wake up and I see my mother sitting on a bed and she's bleeding from the nose, from the ears, from the mouth. And my dad was standing in, in the middle of that room and he was holding some, some torch. There are those flashlights that used to have to use cells. She, he was holding that and he was hitting my mom with that on the head. As a little girl, that is when I, I realized that kind of violence, but I did not get to understand it immediately, but I saw that picture. I, I saw that picture. And then when you know when you are a little girl from the sleep, 
the, the sleep takes me away again, I go back to sleep and that's it. And then the, there were instances where I remember another one. I was still a child and I saw, I would see at night when we are sleeping, yes, I am in bed. The next thing I would see, um, we are outside. I am looking and I'm seeing the sky. I am seeing the bush. That meant that my mom was being beaten by my dad or there was violence in the house. That's why we are now outside. And then one minute we were sleeping, the next minute we are outside at night. So it was like that. But as a child, I never got to understand it clearly. Those were some of the pictures that I carried with me to adulthood. And so that childhood was like that. For me, it was normal, even though there were those kinds of pictures. For me, it was still normal because I was a little girl. So there is this point where my, my mom, my, my, my sibling brothers, the elder ones, um, ran away from home. I, I am in a vicinity of a family and I notice that they are no longer there. You don't get to understand where they went, but they are absent. Now they used to be there, but now they are absent. That is the instances whereby they had ran away from the dad's violence. Allow me to introduce you to Psychex, a trusted partner in mental well-being, offering tailored services for individuals and corporates alike. Remember, you can support any of these women whose stories we continue to share by sponsoring their therapy sessions at Psychex, a trusted partner in mental well-being, offering tailored services for individuals and corporates alike. Psychex provides a range of therapeutic services from licensed therapists to life coaches, all conveniently accessible through a user-friendly web app, www.psychex.io. He was this type of a dad, when they hear him coming home, they will run away, they, they hide under the bed or they get out before he, he, you know, they hear him coming with his drunkness, making noise, they hear that noise and they jump out of the house and run away. Outside, others will hide under the bed, things like that. And then all of a sudden I realized that they are no longer staying with us. And now mom was still there and she still had some of us, about three or four of us who were, who were still younger who could not go anywhere anyway. So the situation continued like that. She, she was still a, a very nurturing mom. She was doing her best to put this home together, taking care of us, especially we the kids, so that we don't notice. And there, it continued like that for some time. Uh, there are even instances whereby I would notice that we are no longer staying in our house we are staying at our neighbor's house. At our neighbor's house, this lady was my godmother. The, the, this mom who used to take me to church a lot, there is this woman who they choose for you as a daughter. And there was a neighbor who became my godmother. And there are instances whereby I would see us, my, my, me, my mom, and the other siblings, I see us in, in her house for a week. Then we are back to our house. Those are instances whereby the violence was too much on her and she could not, instances where she runs away with the kids and she goes and stays at the neighbors, then after a week she comes back. So there was something like that. But mom was still very protective. She was still very hardworking so that we, we didn't get to feel that. She would rather go and stay at the neighbors and, and take us away from that situation, try to get interventions and then she goes back. So go, running away and going back with mediators, things like that. And that happened for quite some time. And uh, at that childhood still, I, I, it reached a point whereby my mom now decided to leave the, the marriage because it became too much. Uh, this, this one day at around six in the evening when it's about dusk, I was outside the house playing and she comes out very clean and dressed up. She was wearing, I, I still remember the dress, it was black and white dress. And then she was wearing, she had a, a headgear that was 
green with the black dots. She comes outside and, and I see her. She's very clean and she has a bag. I, I start crying. I want to follow her. When I'm crying, I want to follow mama. She says, no, uh, I, I'm going to the market. I will bring you a biscuit. And then I just keep quiet uh, over the biscuit. I continue playing and she leaves. Mind you, that's how my mom leaves that home and she never returned. So, so that was six in the evening, I remember crying. I want to follow her. She goes, she doesn't return. By the time mom is leaving this marriage, I was about three years old. I'm in between there, in between three and four years. That was the age because I remember crying. I want to follow her. So she lives and, and I noticed she didn't come back. The following day, I'm looking around. She didn't come back. People are looking for her. And, and mind you, the, our, our father is not there too. So I am with my brothers. And then when she doesn't come back, there is this trend that I picked up. When, when mom left, I picked a trend. Now that I'm not seeing her, I am expecting her back. I started going on, um, you know, in the village there is this uh, bus stop, designated bus stops whereby the, the buses will come and drop people. So I used to go to one of those. I would sit there and wait for every vehicle that stops by to see if my mama is going to come out of any. And she never came out of any of those buses. And that was very painful. And I, I, I did that. I went to that bus stop for quite some time. I can't even remember for how long because I was still a little girl. Now, I gave up when I realized that she's not coming back. She's not coming out of any of these buses. So I go back. And I, I noticed that I have been left with one of my brothers. He is the one who is around. Everybody else has gone. That time uh, when mom was leaving, she had had another baby after me. So there was a little one. She had taken that one with her. Uh, so for me and, and my brother, we were still there. The, so there was that one and another one of my brothers and, and the little girl, they, she had taken those ones. The others had left home earlier. So I was left with one of my brothers. And now when I realized that this is the only person I am with now, I started coping. And my brother took over because my dad was not around. He used to come home maybe end month. And sometimes he would even stay three months or I don't know how long. He would come and bring us food. There were instances whereby he would even send, uh, he was working in the city. He would send some touts, the, the bus touts to come and drop food for us as they go. You know, that's our dad. That's what he used to do so that he doesn't, he knows he has people at home, but he doesn't come home. He sends food for us, S sends touts to come and bring us something. Then. That's it. So it would take a very long time without seeing him. Now there is no mother, there is no dad. I am left with my brother, the other siblings are gone too. So life became like that. I used to attend school somewhere in the village with my brother. He, would, he, he took over, he used to clean me up, like he would dress me, prepare me very well and go to school with me. He would come back, he's the one cooking, he, he makes sure that I sleep. And now that was it uh, for quite some time. So then, um, we, we st when he's not around, cause maybe he would go to play or he's still at school cause he was a bigger boy. I would go to, instead of staying home alone, I would go to a neighbor who was a grandma. A grandma who had so many kids, the daughters you had left her with so many little ones. So for me also, I went and joined. So whenever my brother is not around, that's the one who nursed me. Like sometime he would even forget that there was a baby somewhere and he would come looking at midnight and the, the grandma would tell him, no, just let her sleep. I will get her ready from here to go to school tomorrow. So that one became like my second home now because the actual home has become so lonely. 
the actual home has just turned out to be it's it's messed up now it's the it's it's not functional the way it was so it's like now i found a second home so my time passed on between my brother and this grandma my brother and this grandma i'll never forget about her i think until today that mama lives may god bless her then uh it comes to a point where by now there is a sister to my mother somewhere who remembers that we are in the we were left in the village and what my mom had done when she was leaving she had taken the kids in in the african society we usually name children you 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 there are some societies who name the children on the side of the father you name children on the side of the mother according to how they come so the ones who are named on the side of the mother she had taken those ones the ones who were named on the side of the father me being one of them that's why i was left there and it is so sad because i don't understand why you would leave a little girl simply because your reasoning is she is the mother of my husband that's a name but i am your daughter um that's an explanation i came to get later that she had left the ones who were named on that side because those are children for that home and then she took the ones who were named on her mother's side because those are children on her side anyway this sister of my mother who is supposed to be my auntie she comes she remembers that there are kids who are left there now her sister's kids she comes to the village she invites us for a christmas um holiday in her home somewhere in the city so she takes us from the village takes us to her house for a week or two or even a month then the christmas is over and now it's it was time for us to go back to the village because in january we have to go back to school and i remember i had um grown a bit because now i was supposed to go to class 2 so i was about 6 years around there so at 6 years she comes she drops us back home because we are opening school in january then my brother says when when she leaves us there at home now my brother tells me no we cannot stay here you see everybody left us it's only you and i that were left here why should we come back and stay here yet we know we can go somewhere and i asked my brother where do you think we should go he said i have a plan when she leaves we are going to our grandma the, now the mother to my, to our mom he knows where uh, uh he he told me that he knows where our grandma lives and then i say no me i'm not following you to anywhere if you want to go you go me i am i am ready i want to go to school on monday we are opening school and i was arguing with him and i remember him telling me no if you don't follow me it's up to you i'm leaving and when i saw him packing again immediately after we had been dropped by our auntie he packs and he's taking the bags and he's leaving so i, I remember running after him obviously i don't want to be left alone that's now the only one i had there and then i followed him i had no option then we get to this grandma's place he knew where she lived when we get there coincidentally we 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 found our father was there looking for us but before he realized that we are coming in i was hidden somewhere in the bushes so that he doesn't get to see us he lives without us he he had come to check if we are at our grandmothers so that we can go to school on monday then i was hidden pushed somewhere in the bush and i was told to keep quiet so that he doesn't notice that we are around there and then he lives without us when he lives now we come out and we meet our grandmother and now he's explaining now we don't want to stay there what what then three days later my father comes back checking i went home the the auntie is saying that she took them back but i went home they are not there now he comes back like two days later he finds me but the boy runs my brother saw my dad and he ran away he ran and until today i'm wondering why that is his father 
Why would a child see a father and run? He ran like a gazelle and disappeared into the bushes. And they were even trying to tell some boys to go and find him and, and bring him back, but nobody caught him. Then later, when he leaves, he, he, my dad said, now because she has, she's a girl, a little girl, and there is nobody at home, I can't handle her. She, he told my grandmother, you can stay with her. You, you, you find, where the mom, find out where the mom is. So I am left with my grandmother. And I stayed. Uh, the following day, uh, during the day, I see my brother peeping from the bushes. He's peeping to see if it's okay for him to come out. This is a child running away from the father. And that was so sad. So he comes back and then we now stay with the grandmom and our grandmom now start looking for my mama and she was found somewhere in Mombasa. She had gone to look for a job there and that's now where she had settled. So our grandmom takes us again. That's a journey to the coast and then she takes us to our mother. So we rejoin our mom and uh, the other two siblings, then there were other four. The, the other four were not there. They, they, they had just gone to just find for life by themselves. So they, are, they were not with the mom. From there now, mom takes over. She stays at the coast. She's working. She's no longer in a marriage. She's a single mom. And she's trying to make the ends meet. She was working now you know she has the kids here she's the only one and all of a sudden my mom gets sick it's like she she develops something mental she starts behaving weird weirdly in the house she's talking to herself she's telling herself stories she's hitting things on the wall and then it was announced that she's sick and our grandmom is told to come and get her so that was after some time at the coast. So my grandmother comes and gets my mom and she takes us back together, all of us together now, because now she can't handle it. We are taken back to our grandmothers now together with our mom and she's sick. What I understand now, that was depression. She, she developed depression. And from there, she was taken to Madari Mentor for handling, for treatment. When she goes to, she goes in for medication. Now we are left there with our grandmother. This sister of my mother, the same sister of my mother who had invited us, she comes in as a helper to help her with these kids. Now she takes us to her place. Now we get a guardian. And uh, that's how we moved in with her. I did not like what happened there. She was very mean, abusive. She was this woman who was, this sister of my mother, I'm supposed to call her my auntie, but I can't, or let me just call her my auntie because she is, she was very bitter, a very bitter woman. She, she would never laugh. She used to beat me like, it, it happened that she, it's like she hated me for something. I don't understand what. At that age, there is nothing I was fighting for her for with her why would she hate me so much and i stayed with this woman for some time together with my other siblings and the, the, there were so many other kids in her house and the way she was raising us she was kind of violent and me specifically she used to hate me i was this clever girl i used to pass very well in school i used to be position one all the time position one all the time it got to a point where she will be asking the other siblings for their report forms when the, re the exam is done. She doesn't ask for mine. As a child, I, I, I was wondering, why, why don't you want to see mine? I would assume, even if it is position one, all the time it's obvious, there could be variations or ranges or just something it can't just be you don't take mine because it's obvious i'll be position one or what was it i don't understand then it gets to a point whereby she starts lacking my school fees she 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 gets fee for all the others she doesn't have mine how 
which is okay. Uh, I remember one of my teachers in school, because I was very clever, she decided this girl is very clever and she's not going to go home for fee. She takes up, she, she was a school secretary. She decides to pay for my, I'm, I'm sent out of class and it's exam time. So she decides to pay. When she paid, I come home and this woman beats me up thoroughly. Um, and she claims that I am prostituting. I am a prostitute. I have started sleeping with men. How do I prostitute at eight years? I did not even know that word. I came to understand that word when I, I am a grown up. H how, how do you call me a prostitute at eight years? I did not even know what a man is, apart from seeing trousers, which is fine. And it was, there, there was a lot of difficulties in this house of hers. Like, I remember one time, there is this program that used to come on TV, those ones who, are, um, who, who remember the, what was it, Ridiculous? Some, some program called Ridiculous, that was comedy. When this comedy used to show up on TV, it was so funny. Like, there are some instances that it's just funny for some people. You wouldn't resist laughing. I remember in her house, we were watching. And there are so many other people. We were watching Ridiculous. And me, I find it funny and I laugh. <laughs> now, she attacked me. She beat me up, asking me, what are you laughing about? And she sent me out. She threw me out. You know, I, di I didn't understand, and until today I do not understand. Am I not allowed to laugh when it is funny? Even there are others behind there. I, used to, I was hearing the other siblings laughing. <laughs> you know, you want to laugh, but you <laughs> it's like you are coughing because she is there. You can't laugh. What kind of a human being is this? And for me, because of being beaten, I was being victimized, I was being misused. I, it's like she just hated me and I didn't like it. So it got to a point where I decided to leave. And remember, when I'm leaving, I don't even know where my mother, how to go to my mother. First of all, she was even hospitalized. That's why I'm here. So I decide I am not going to stay here anymore. It happens that I went to school one day. She had cut our hair, claiming that we are stealing her hair oil. And the hair was cut, you know, when you're pleated lines and then she cuts the lines, you, you are left with the, some hair that is in lines and you are shaved. And there is this teacher at school who notices that all of us from the house, we are having sweaters on the head. And she asks what's going on. We remove the sweaters and the hair is cut in lines. She, he decides to take us to a barber shop at the shopping center, from the school to the shopping center. We are at the barber shop, and she's passing by with a certain lady. She sees me, and I hear, you, what are you doing out of school? What did I tell you about prostituting? You know, she's shouting at me in a market, telling me how I am prostituting, and I am with a teacher with, with some other kids. Actually, my siblings were also there because they were also shaved that way. And she starts insulting me, and she's swearing how when you come back home, you will meet me. Today you will know who I am. And when she says that I knew, she's going to beat me up. And uh, I decided I will not be beaten. I will not go back. And I shout back, I won't come back. I, I just shouted like a joke. You, I'm waiting for you, you will meet me at home. I said, I will not come back. And then she went. So when I went back to school, I have this thing in mind that I said, I will not come back. So I decided when the bell rings, there's this bell that they ring at school, you go to class. For me, I decided when they are going to class, I am walking out the gate. So they are going this way after the bell, me, I'm going out the gate. That was the moment, lunchtime, I walked out of the school and I started walking. And I just walked and walked with nothing apart from my uniform. And I walked to nowhere. Then the night meets me at a certain place in a bushy area. It had a lot of sugar cane. I think it was a company's sugar cane farm. 
So I get in the bush and I sleep. I decide to sleep there. And I was feeding on this sugar cane because of hunger. And then that night passes. Very early in the morning, I wake up and start walking again. And I walk and I walk. I'm, I'm no destiny, but I'm just walking. So evening comes, dusk falls. I, f I find myself at a certain church, Catholic church. I won't name it. But when I found myself at that church, I entered. I get into the church and I decide I will sleep there. So I, I sneak in, I find some priest there who was performing the service for the evening. When the service is over, they get out, I remain in the church, so I lie on the bench. I was so tired for walking the whole day, I'm so hungry, and then I lie on the bench and sleep. At night, there is security patrol, this patrol security that goes around, they are looking around, so he finds me sleeping on a bench. When he finds me sleeping on this bench, he wakes me up. Hey, what is wrong? And then I wake up and start crying. Then he listens to me. I talk to him, I tell him my problem. I came from a certain place. When he heard me, he, he was a very good officer, actually. He, he was kind of an older man, an elderly man. He was a bit aged. He handled me very well. He got me food. I appreciate him because I stayed in that church compound for about two weeks. I'm just in the compound. He goes home in the morning. I am playing around. He comes back in the evening. He brings me food. And then we were, he was trying to explain my situation to the priest in charge. The priest in, in charge was dismissing me. He was dismissing, you know, sometimes they would just dismiss. They don't take cases like that. You know, it's a runaway case. Why don't she go back to where she came from? And I stayed there for two weeks and he took care of me. This man never abused me in any way for those two weeks. And he was giving me food and all that. So in the process of my, my play in this compound, remember I don't even have clothes. I only came in a uniform. It's very dirty. I am taking a bath on a, on a tap in the compound. That's how I bath now. When people are gone and it's, it's dark, I start bathing on a tap. I put on the same small uniform that I had. And I survived there for two weeks until one, this lady walks in that church compound and sees me. She is the secretary from the school where I was, the same one who was paying my fee when, when the other lady could not get my fee. And she sees me and I see her, I run away. I'm running. I don't want anybody who knows me because I don't want to go back to where I am coming from. I don't want to be taken back to my guardian. She sends some boys to catch me for her and then I am caught. She goes into the office. She was coming to see the priest and then she says, I know this girl. Allow me to take her with me. I know where she comes from. Then they argue. They, you know, she said she's looking for the mother. She came from her auntie, something like that. I try to say, no, I don't want to be taken to my auntie. She will take me. But the priest says, no, she will take you. I will contact. Now they, they said they will talk and see how I, I will get back to my mother. So she takes me with her <laughs> to her house. And I'll never forget that lady. So she, she was very motherly. She takes me there. I sleep over there. She cleans me up dresses me with her siblings. She, she has children too. So I am now clean. I am fed. Then the following day, she tells me, don't go anywhere. I am coming back. We will go somewhere. Then my mind tells me, she will take me to that guardian. She will take me to that auntie of mine. And um, there is no way I'm going back there. So I wait for her to leave. I walk out. I walk out. Now at least I am not in uniform. I'm clean now and I am dressed up nicely again. I walk and walk and walk and I'm not going anywhere. I don't know where my mother is. I don't know how to go back to where, I don't even know the way to to trace where, where she, you know, the, the grandmother's place. So I just walk and walk 
and it's very hot it's very dusty i am hungry and the dusk again and there is this thing i am doing walking and walking and i'm not going anywhere and then i find a place written sisters of our lady of charity I was raised in church a lot. Those early years, I used to see my mom with these nuns. I was even in a nursery school for nuns. So I used to see them and I used to love them so much. And I knew these sisters, they do take people to school. I, I knock the gate. When I knock this gate, I go in and say, I want to see the sister in charge. The security man says, no, the sister in charge is not around. And, and that time it's dusk, it's getting dark. Now, because I don't know, I, don't, I have nowhere to go. I go back out there, he doesn't allow me in. I sit at the gate, the dark falls, and I fall asleep at the gate. So I think the, the, there was a change of, you know, shifts. Yeah, another one comes later around nine, finds me asleep and he wakes me up and asks me, who are you? I saw you here when I was coming, what do you want? And I say, I came here, I wanted to see the sister in church. Uh, do you have an appointment? I said, no, but I must wait for her because it is urgent. And I think the way he looked at me, I was eight years then, eight. And then he decides it's, it's at night. So he tells me, come in. And he goes to that office and asks for the sister in charge. So the sister comes and they say, yes, come in. Who are you? Now, when I go in there, I, might, I, I met a group of them, the, the nuns. S several, they, there were several nuns seated in a room. And I get a seat. They welcomed me. They asked me, who are you? What is it? What, what do you want? You came here, I don't know when, and you are still here, and it's late at night. Then I say, I am Elizabeth Wamboy. I came from a certain place. I ran away from my auntie's place, and I want the sister in charge to take me to school. So she says, uh, now I don't even know which one of them is the sister in charge. So they look at each other. Who told you that sisters do take people to school? I just say, no, I know the sisters do take people to school. <sighs> and then they look at each other. Then they say, they, they start going. They, one of them said, just sit there. You, you'll get something to eat. Then they go. I was given food, I took a bath, they gave me a place to sleep. The following day, someone tells me we will be sending somebody to go and trace you, you, where you come from. So they did that and I didn't even know who, who was sent or how they did it. I remained in the, that place for a day or two. Then one day I find myself in a sister's car and another lady's, a lady is there, a social worker I think, and they drive now to where my mom is. At this time now, she has left the hospital. She is well. She is now at my, my grandmother's, her mother's place. So that's where they found her. And that's how I reunited with my mama. After reuniting with my mom, and she was well, but now she doesn't have, she, she is just at home there, nothing is going on at her mother's place. The sister immediately, like a day, organizes on how to take me to school. Um, she, she takes me to a boarding school. And I go to class four. Boarding. So I started boarding like that. Uh, at that age, now it's boarding. Yes, I have, I have left the auntie that I didn't like, the way she was treating me. Yes, I have reunited with my mother. But now I am in a boarding school somewhere. I have to stay there with these nuns and that society now of a boarding school. The only time I get to see these people outside now is after three months, you close school, you go home one month, then you open, you come back again three months. A year you only go out three months and that was it for me from that age, class four, until I finished um, class eight. I am with these nuns. And then I pass very well. I was very clever. Position one throughout. There is no two. So this nun happens to like me so much. 
may God bless her. Maybe she will see this. And she 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 just fell in love with me. And she when when they came to to class eight, now she proposes that they are taking me to secondary school. And they they say no, you know the parent has to chip in. You know they now want my mom to pay. The the nuns now. They say no. You see, it's she, she, it's not that she has a problem. They can even she can even pay half of this fee, and they start arguing. And by the, the by the time she's taking my my name in there, and she's trying to convince them, they disown me. They say no, we don't want this nun comes by herself and takes over. She she just takes over by herself now, and she takes me to secondary school. When she took me to secondary school, I passed very well. I was position one in KCP my year that time. They called me um, at the Our Lady of Charity, South B. That's where they called me for high school. So she took me. When she was taking me, she decided sometimes they usually tell the parent to chip in, to just do something. You, you don't get the full fee and everything covered just like that. So they go to my mom and she tells my mama, uh, there is this admission form for your daughter. She's going to this school, get some of these things. Whatever you get, you come. We are taking to her to school on this date. So my mom gets this form. This, the, that admission form that you usually get before you join the school. So my mom does not know where to get this money because life is still difficult. The other kids who have reunited with her as well, she's still raising, she doesn't have a job. She's just doing manual jobs. Sometimes it's not even enough for food. And this is school, you know, sometimes how difficult it can be. So she tries to get something, get something, nothing. She knew where my father was working in the city. She holds my hand and tells me, let's go to your father. You have to go to school. And we go to that company in the city. I remember I was behind my mother. When my dad came out, he's being called. He came out and mama is there with this form and he's telling, she's telling him, please, um, your daughter is going to school on this date. Please get me one of these things even if it's a single thing it will be all right and i saw my father move away from that paper he, he he was moving away from that paper like that paper should not touch him i saw that i was behind my mother and he said i have so many other families i i can't with with that one of yours you, your family i can't i have other families and she dismissed my mother like that so my mom holds my hand again and we leave. Now what? She just tried, then nothing. She only got um, a, a, a dress, a, um, like the, the uniform, the, the one, one set of uniform. But the, the one she even gets is not the, the genuine one because schools, you know, schools usually do do a certain a specific uniform so that if it's a uniform it's it's uniform and so you'll find it at outlets like that time it was textile imagine she goes to textile and she can't afford she looks for somebody to tailor and the the tailoring does not even match the, the one now that is in school and the school was kind of strict our lady of Marcy, South B, it's strict, so they, they sell their uniforms in outlets. So the, the one she got, we went there. The, the school is also headed by nuns. The, the head teacher there dismissed the, that uniform, so we, we still have to pay for the one in there. But sister saw the effort and then she took over again from the book, from the pen, from the uniform, everything, everything, and I got into school and that was it. In secondary school now, again, boarding. So from there, after like one term, I, I am moved from that school to another one in um, Consolata Catholic Mission, that is CCM. Today it's known as St. Annelite. That is now where I was transferred to. Now my secondary school, I finished there very well. I passed. After passing, there was still a debate whether we are still taking her on but this sister still fought for me and she made sure that I get to I get into Catholic University. 
So Catholic University choir, that is where I graduated, is a biology and chemistry teacher. Now, now life was so easy because when this sister came into my life, it got easier, it got a bit soft because she was taking care of me, she protected me. I didn't now have to, you, you see, even the way I'm being, the, the upbringing within the nuns, the, those compounds, you know, you, you get the kindness, you get the peace. They, they are advocating for unity, love. They, they, are, they are so loving people. They are so kind, such that my life from class four changed. I never got to experience the, these things out here, the hate, the, the, the beating. Sometimes you are being caned for things that are not even reasonable. But in this place, you are, you are being taught in kindness, in love. You are being brought up in love. You are being brought up in peace, in unity, in care. And that was me until I am in this Catholic university. I was a very quiet girl, calm, very composed, contented. I didn't even have boyfriends then because you are with the nuns. So the, those, those kinds of things, they, they, are, they are not there. Now when I am in this Catholic university, you are now an adult, you are in charge, you have a hostel, you, you do things by yourself, nobody is guarding you, nobody is watching. So I start deciding, now I, I start making a decision. I start trying, I, I try to pick up now what, what exactly do I want. And that's where now life, my life now turned around, it flipped when it came to partner choice, choice of a lover or a relationship partner, the life just flipped like that. And that's what has now brought me to the tears, the pain, the sorrow, the loneliness, the anguish, the uncertainty, the confusion, the unfulfillment that I am wallowing in today.